Just a few weeks ago, Shallon50k on Twitch was running a friendly challenge to his followers and interested folks. The winners were to receive some sort of FPGA board that can run the Mega 65 core. The challenge was to reproduce the following screen on the Commodore 64 using just about any technique you can think of, i.e. using basic or basic kernel routines or assembly language. The use of compression was forbidden since it went against the general spirit of the competition. The user who generated the smallest compiled PRG file would be declared the winner. The challenge intrigued me. As you can see from the image, it's a fairly basic spiral, nothing too tricky. My first thought was there's probably some easy math formula which could quickly generate this thing, but I had no idea what it could be. Anyhow, the competition is now closed, the winners declared. In this video, I'm going to cover some of the solutions that I came up with, both in basic and at least one solution in assembly language, and at the end, I'll share all the top winning solutions the pros came up with over on the Twitch and Discord channels. I'll post all of the source code mentioned in the video onto my GitHub account. I will tell you now, there were a couple of tricks I never knew about and a few ideas that never even dawned on me. Stay tuned for that. If you would like to try your hand at cranking out a succinct, elegant solution to this challenge, please feel free to pause this video and give it a go, since the rest of the video is essentially spoilers. I thought I might be able to come up with a solution, but I just wasn't sure if it would be very elegant. And in the end, my solutions were mostly far from it. As I first started trying to code a solution in assembly, people started chiming in on Discord with their final product byte counts, mostly coming in at under 100 bytes. This was discouraging at first since I was somewhere above 200 bytes, but it did set the bar. At any rate, I welcomed the idea of the challenge no matter what. I thought this could be a great learning experience. I decided to start out by writing a basic program to try to come up with an algorithm that might work, and I came up with this first basic program. As it turns out, this particular solution is not that far off from some of the best ones out there. This was the first one I decided to try converting into assembly language, but was quickly discouraged as I realized there are four loops, and each loop in my example had to do some simple calculations, which can balloon once you convert to assembly. My initial code was more than 200 bytes and the leading solutions online were coming in at 100 bytes, so I abandoned my first attempt and went on to try other algorithms. I didn't even realize until I started making this video, I was so focused on the algorithm that I didn't notice the character I draw on the screen was not the correct one for the challenge. My second attempt was not that much different from the first. The program was shorter, but still not quite what I was looking for. Next, I thought, what if I could do the same as the previous attempt, only this time do it only using one for loop? Would that even be possible? I think this might be the most enjoyable one to watch being drawn. The only problem with this one, which I, I like, is just that it does all these calculations that, slow, that can um, balloon when you go into assembler. On the next one, I decided to try using a different tact and use the basic kernel to move the cursor around the screen for some reason. This was the one I decided to try to implement in assembly. As it turns out, I was only able to crunch it down to 130 bytes. From this, I knew it was not the proper algorithm. So on this one, what it's doing is moving the cursor left, 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 draw, left, draw, right, draw, right, draw. And it does finish here. And then how I implemented it in assembly was right here. It's not too too bad, but it's a little more uh, bloated, a lot more bloated than the, than the final solutions everyone else came up with. I was proud that I was able to implement the bit command in order to, 
to save a few bytes here and there, but in all, it was too large. Finally, I came up with another solution taking yet another tact. I thought it could be made into a smaller routine in assembly, not small enough to compete with the pros, but I never got around to implementing it. And so I'm gonna run that. So you see that one runs much quicker and it, it makes a determination. It prints the left, the left side of one line, then it prints the middle, oops, then it prints the middle, either spaces or the character. And then on the right side, it prints, it prints the, um, either the, either like a space at space at, and it does the calculation and then it does it on odd row, even rows, it prints this, odd rows, it prints the spaces in the middle. And I, I was on to something with this algorithm. I just hadn't finished refining it. But um, anyway, on to the next one. Next, I wanted to show you a basic solution submitted by SP175 on Discord. I thought it was clever and elegant. It seems like it would easily translate as well. So you can watch it as it goes, but that's the whole program up there. And I, I liked how succinct this one was. And I thought it was a, a beautiful solution. Really simple. The final basic solution I came across was submitted by user Acmafin on Discord. I was blown away by how short and succinct the solution is. Only three short lines. The ASM conversion was translated to 70 bytes from this. So check that out, only three little short lines in basic. And runs the same algorithm as the pre previous example by SP175. Shaolin mentioned the shortest basic entry that he received, what clocked in at 120 bytes submitted by user Detlef of the Mega 65 team. I didn't include it on this video because I didn't have the source code, so I apologize for that. Now I wanna show you the top five solutions submitted leading up to the winning solution and cover some of the tricks that were used to squeeze out a few additional bytes. You may notice as I bring up the various solutions, the code looks pretty similar and that most of them are using the same general algorithm, that is, to start drawing the spiral from the top left. Solution one, user gee half, 62 bytes. Right off the bat, this one uses a stack trick to save a byte, telling the C64 where to start the program. However, it was pointed out by Shallon on stream that the next instruction to clear the screen could have been added to the stack, saving one additional byte. The next couple of entries made this same mistake. And I use mistake in air quotes. So here's Gihav's solution, and he starts it at 01F8. And Shallon was saying, this is the command here to clear the screen, which I learned, which is something I, a new thing I learned. And that could have been pushed onto the stack as well using a trick to save a byte. And you can see the rest of the program is really short, nice and elegant. Solutions two and three both came in at 61 bytes and were submitted by James and Enduron. In James's example, we see yet another trick that had never crossed my mind, and that was the use of illegal opcodes. These are instructions that can still be utilized but are considered unstable. They can save a byte here and there by combining multiple operations into one command. James used one called ANC, which sets the carry bit without affecting the accumulator. For this challenge, as long as the program functions properly, there was no harm in using these illegal opcodes. So here's the ANC command. It's sometimes it's hard to find because it's a different color than the rest of the opcodes. It comes up as white inside um, kick here. And he also starts it at 01F8. Then Endurons starts at 01F8. And, and that's his entire program right here. And you can see he, he does, he um, 
does that trick and he does this clear the screen at the beginning. Solution four was submitted by Andy the Magic Knight and was only 53 bytes and took second place. Well done, congratulations for that. Andy used an illegal op code, XAA, which ands together the A and X and immediate register. Reading from the website here, XAA transfers the contents of the X register into the A register and then ands the A register with an immediate value. Andy, as well as the next two entries, also employed yet another really clever idea that I hadn't thought of, and that was to start their programs at the address space in zero page, specifically address 42, loading the entire program into zero page, saving many bytes. Anyhow, his entry was really smart and elegant. Again, only 53 bytes. I asked him about how he chose to start his program at that address. He gave a detailed explanation on his blog, which I appreciated. So here's Andy's solution. Here's the illegal op code. And yeah, and he started it at address 42. Shallon's solution was only 52 bytes, but he was running the challenge and he had access to everyone's entries and ideas. So it doesn't really count, but it is included in the download file. He employed the bit command to save a few bytes. So he also used the illegal op code and he used the bit command right here to save a few bytes and he cleared the screen here. And finally, the winning solution clocking in at only 51 bytes was submitted by Carl Henrik. His solution was really clever in that the algorithm is not directional. Instead, it scans each row and column of the screen from left to right, making the determination of what character to draw. Really clever. Carl gave a more in-depth explanation of his solution over on his GitHub page. So here's his uh, GitHub page, and he goes into a lot of detail and shows a lot of different examples. But what I did was I took his first idea, his explanation pseudocode right here, and I brought it into CBM Program Studio, and I made my version in BASIC. So I copied, I copied that little pseudocode idea here that he had, and I went ahead and I kind of translated it into this just to see how it, just to slow it down. Because if you run the assembly language programs, they run instantaneous. They're so fast. And you can see here, this was an early attempt before he had fully fixed it to be perfect. Uh, I, I chose the number two just to, that was just me. That was just my, and then if you warp it, to speed it up, you can kind of see how it's going over the screen, one line, a row, column at a time. And then with a few tweaks, you can make it look exactly like the, the winning entry, is which, which is what he submitted, ultimately submitted to win the competition. So congratulations to Carl for his winning submission. Very, very impressed indeed. Really, really nice and elegant solution. So here's his program. He starts it at for address 46. And if you took out a few of the spacing here, this whole thing, obviously, it would fit on one, pro, on one screen. Yeah, he didn't use any illegal op codes on his example. But this one's a little complicated to read through, so I can't explain exactly what it's doing. <laughs> the basic one I can understand better. But yeah, this one, complicated. Anyhow, I had fun racking my brains and following this challenge. I learned a few new techniques along the way. One of the things I realized after seeing everyone's solutions was the way I was approaching drawing the characters on the screen was a bit bloated in comparison to the pro solutions. Lesson learned. Tangentially, I learned a few more things as a result of the challenge. Even though these techniques were not used in any of the final solutions, I did learn a few tips. The first one was what I already talked about was how you can clear the screen with address um, E544 or SYS58692. And a lot of the entries use that address to clear the screen. And so I didn't know that that was a kernel routine to clear the screen, I thought that was interesting. The next trick that I came across was I didn't I didn't realize that there were 
kernel routines that can position the cursor, the X and Y position of the cursor. And I found this post on Melon64 by Arthur Jordison, who did the CBM Program Studio. And he has a nice little short example where you can set your row and your column, go sub to 1000, and it pokes the, the proper values into the basic kernel to move to position the cursor. So you can print hello world wherever you want on the screen. So I thought that was a, a neat thing. I wasn't even able to utilize that though in my, so I didn't use that ultimately in my solution either. But kind of related to that is the assembly language version of that. Uh, in a lot of my programs on the channel, I use a short table containing the high and low bytes of each row on the screen. Well, I just learned these values are stored in memory at the following address locations. At the low byte is at ECF0, and the high byte is at address D9. So if we look here in the monitor, address ECF0, see how you have each uh, address here is being incremented by 40 bytes, uh, 0, 28, 50, 78, A0. And then at address D9, see how it starts at 84? Well, if you just subtract the 8 off, or if you mask it off, you'll have 0, 4, 0, 4, 0, 4, and then 0, 5. So that's the high byte. And so you can use uh, those two memory addresses to potentially save uh, somewhere close to 50 bytes if you can use those uh, addresses in your program rather than including them in the data as a part of your program. Now, Shallon mentioned perhaps selling spiral t-shirts on his Patreon channel, and I think that would be cool. And if he does put them for sale, I'll do a YouTube post to um, put his, the link to purchase the t-shirts. And anyhow, I hope that you learned something from this video and I appreciate you following and thanks for watching.